the grapes. Check this out. Hello and welcome back to Youth Group Reunion Tour, the podcast that unpacks the Christian cultural touchstones that you grew up with in the 90s and in the 2000s. Uh, I'm your host. My name is Jared. And this is Mikey B. And uh, we're back here after uh, a, a brief hiatus, uh, back here uh, ready and excited to record a new episode. Um, so uh, we'll just get right into it. We're going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, move away from our, our previous history of like rambling for 20 minutes or so. That was uh, a fun part. That was back yeah. when we didn't know how long it was going to be on the podcast. We were like, <laughs> yeah. oh, wow, we only have five minutes of material, and then we get two hours worth now, so we yeah. don't even need to dance around it. Yeah, so we, yeah, so we, don't, need to, we don't need to vamp for time just to make the, the thing long enough to put out, uh, yeah. so we can get right into it. So, uh, Mike, why don't you go ahead and introduce what our topic for today is going to be? Sure. <clears throat> Under the banner of 90s and 2000s church Christian culture, there is something that everybody recognizes, but I'm not sure very many people actually know about. And this was my experience with this as well. Yes. It is what you think is a cartoon, but it is not a cartoon <laughs> at all. So so what you what we're talking about is that, uh, and we're, we're falling right back into our thing. Oh, <laughs> the sorry. Yeah, I did it It's again. okay. Let's do it. We're going to do it. Um, <laughs> okay. It's... Uh, what I would always see is that there would be people at church that would have like this Bible uh, and the Bible would be, have like this little, like um, it was like a, like a branded Bible that this, this, these people put out, I believe. And it had like a little blue, uh, what I believed to be a Bible on it, like a cartoon blue Bible. And I, I just was like, Oh, that's, you know, some, some kind of other people had like um, Bible cases Mm -hmm. That were like, you know, like the zip up ones. And it was like had this and it had this this cartoon Bible like face on it and stuff. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is, you know, something that I don't know about. But it, it must be similar to Adventures in Odyssey or Veggie Tales or, you know, something like that. I was like, this is this is something along those lines. And I just don't know what it is. But a ton of people at church have it. Yes, we are talking about yeah. salty. Sorry for uh, teasing yeah. everyone on that one. It's just so, in my blood. I wanted to hype yeah. it up, Jared. It's so important that, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I want to make sure people know how cool it was and yeah. you know, have a little bit of mystique to it. So as we as we were like thinking through uh, like topics that we want to discuss, we we're like we got to talk about that blue Bible because I remember it, but I didn't know that much about it. And so as we we're trying to find it, we were like, we can't find this this blue bible and the reason is that it's not a bible All right. right so it's called salty the singing songbook um i and i mentioned this to my wife and she's like oh yeah i know that she she's she she of course knew what it was immediately um and it is this um property that uh this husband and wife came up with and it has basically uh there's a bunch of cd's uh, that have like songs and like little skits on them. Um, and there's like a whole like salty, salty verse of characters and things like that. Um, so we're going to go through them here. Um, so the, the first one obviously is salty. He's the blue, uh, the blue song book uh, that, um, you know, we, that we thought was a Bible, uh, but he's a blue song book. And then he has a wife, and her name is Saltina. And she is a <laughs> yellow book of poetry. And then they have uh, uh, triplets. They have, tri they have triplets. Yes, Mike, do you want to introduce the triplets to us? Sure. So we have all musical themes. It's a very musical family. Yes. It is melody. So melody is the pink one. Harmony is the green one. Both of them. Uh, Harmony has the pigtails. Melody is just the regular ponytails. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not sure what the particular name for that kind of. I, I believe it's thing Melody. Is. Ha I think Melody has pigtails and Harmony has braids. I think is okay. What it is. So oh, they're braids. pigtails but braided. Yeah. I I reversed them. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I I should know this. And then the third one is rhythm. Right. That was the triplet set. So yeah. melody, harmony, and rhythm. And they're and they're called the booklets. 
<laughs> so they're referred to as the booklet. So Melody is is pink and she has blonde hair. Uh, Harmony is green and has red hair. And then Rhythm is orange and he has blonde hair. Yes. Um, and Rhythm is like the punk rock kid. Yeah, who, like, he's a drummer. Yeah, yes. they, they do what their name says, right? So when they're, if you go to this website, um, the, which we'll talk about the website in a little bit. It's a trip. But um, the website, you click on, you can click on each character to learn about them. And when you click on Melody, she's like, I sing the melody. And then Harmony is like, I sing the harmony. And they explain what melody and harmony are. For, uh, nice. for dumb dumbs like me that don't know the difference, uh, and then you click on rhythm, and he's like, "I play the drums. <laughs> I keep the rhythm." Um, it specifically says "rat a tat tat rat a tat tat." Just <laughs> that's how, that's how I yeah. hear it in my head, but you know, every, um, everyone else hears a different tune, I suppose. Yeah, and then in addition, so this is like the core group, right? The family. Uh, oh, sorry. And then they also have a dog. The dog is named Blooper, um, very um, Pluto esque uh, in the depiction of him. He's like white and blue, but he looks like a white and blue version of Pluto to me when mm-hmm. I when I saw him. Yeah, um, definitely. And then there are also like an additional like cast of characters beyond the main family. So there is someone named Charity Church Mouse, which is. Um, she is a mouse that wanted to become a gospel singer in California. And she was like passing through uh, like, you know, Salty's church or whatever, and then like decided to stay. And so she like is uh, leads like a group of, of church mice there and like singing. Um, and then there is also someone named Farley McFirefly, who I believe only appears in like one or two of the CDs, but he is a, um, a firefly that only has one wing, uh, and he like lights the their way to help them find someone. It says uh, the help Salty find Matthew and Lisa. I don't know who Matthew and Lisa are, but that's it, that's deeper in the cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then apparently, there, yeah. I was gonna say so. There's one more, and it's yes. Solomon the Salamander. Were you getting to that it's, one? Yeah, Solomon the Supersonic Salamander, which I I mean. I think, and and to be clear, these people are all in the CDs. Uh, we watched the TV show for as preparation for this. We yeah. didn't listen to the CDs. That may be a future episode where we go through and listen to the CDs. But my understanding is that he is like completely, um, like separate from from like the entire canon. Like he's like mm-hmm. like a world within a world. It's like when you, I'm trying to. It's like when you would watch Dexter's lab and they would have like those subplots where it was like the superheroes and it had no, and Dexter wasn't in it and DD wasn't, it had nothing to do with any of the regular characters and it was still Dexter's lab, but it was like this, this whole sub thing. That's what I, that's what I believe it is. It's like a sub story within salty. Um, Gotcha. And, and his whole thing is that he can like, uh, like he gets superpowers when there's like people in need or whatever. Hmm. he's he's brave yeah. supersonic and powerful that's kind of uh, yes. his thing that's according <laughs> to this bio here that we just read yeah. he can fly fast mm-hmm. see me go they have it really <laughs> drawn out there um so let's talk about that website the so, website that we're reading from one last ahead. thing before okay. we move on it is important to note that it is canon within the salty verse <laughs> that salty and blooper <laughs> were in the Iditarod, which for anyone that doesn't know, the Iditarod is a dog sled race in Alaska. And apparently it is canon that they, they competed in the Iditarod. It is unknown if they won, but they competed. Nope. They were that serious. I mean, yes. like they live in California, but train for the Iditarod. It seems yes. legit. Like, where do you train for that? Like, you know, do they spend winters yeah. in Alaska, like the opposite of snowbirds? It's, you know, it's been a while since I read The Call of the Wild, but I believe uh-huh. Buck, the main dog, I believe he was kidnapped from California and he became, you know, a lead sled dog or whatever. So if he could do it, why so not it is Blooper? possible. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, 
listen, I'm going to have to go check. See, yes. a, a lot of this stuff feels autobiographical, right? It felt like yeah. they were sort of writing a lot of their life into these characters yeah. with the whole thing of, oh, I want to be a gospel singer. And I happen to be at a church in California. I yeah. think there's so more than a little parallel <laughs> to yeah. some of these characters. So I am curious if there's yeah. a a real connection to the founders of this as to whether or not they either knew someone in the Iditarod or actually mm-hmm. did that. Uh, I would put, I, I would say it'd be worth a bet. Or maybe, maybe it was like that. aspirational. Like this right. dude is like, he's like obsessed with the Iditarod. He's like, you know what? I made up these characters. They're in the Iditarod. <laughs> I love it. They're, they're going to be yeah. great. They're in the Iditarod. It would be like if you made a character and there was like, ah, yes, they uh, they played for the All Blacks rugby team. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. If I was writing, a, if I had my own, I was like, uh, this guy's a rugby superstar. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does make sense. You got to yeah. write your you write your life into it. And so yeah, yeah. Um, I did want to talk about the website that we're reading from. Um, yes. Everyone talks about the Space Jam website being like the last relic Which, of the 90s. Well, Unfortunately, I believe they, with the release of Space Jam, A New Legacy, I believe they updated it and it's uh, gone now. Bummer. But for anyone that didn't know, when, so Space Jam came out, I think, in 1996. And until the new Space Jam movie came out, which I think was last year, the Space Jam website, spacejam.com, was just a website from 1996. And it had yeah. like all of like, it looked exactly like how you're thinking. It was just like this really bad clip art and like everything was like in a different font. Yeah. And, and it had like some flash animation. It was like the clip and, flash art. Had, and flash had died. So it was like yeah. it didn't work. And <laughs> that was good stuff. So yeah. th- that, that, that space jam website, it, mm-hmm. this salty.com looks yes. a lot like that space jam website. Cause it's very big and bright. Yeah. Like, so it has like font. a, like a, gradient background and yep. there's a ton of different fonts well the thing that gets me is like the the fonts look very microsoft word themed like yes. they're i think just a very basic font and there's like a mm. ton of different ones so like i'm not a design mm. person but i know enough to be dangerous yeah and one of the things with designing websites is you kind of want most of the fonts to be the same or at least in the same family right yeah. you don't and maybe I'm you make the header of, yeah, maybe you make the header different, but you, everything else should be like kind of uniform. Yeah, I'm not a member of the font club or anything like that, but I know you shouldn't mix serif with sans serif. It's just, uh, yeah. you know, a little tacky. But the other <laughs> thing that I noticed about it is these giant headers on it that just really are MS Paint quality. I mean, <laughs> they are so bright and loud yes, and, pix- but, and pixelated. But they are up to date. So like... <laughs> There's one that's scrolling across. So there's one that says Happy Easter. And then yeah. there's one that says Salty's Kids. That's the code salty.com. And then the next one says, Get on board, little children. There's room for many a more. 2022. So that's this is crazy. recently updated. I know. So <laughs> when Jared was like, Yeah, it just was updated in 2014, I almost didn't believe him. But I'm looking right now. It says copyright yes. 2014. Yes. I mean, they have typos on it. The customer service. <laughs> at salty.com is misspelled on there, right? It's, uh, <laughs> you know, if if they, maybe they can do their once in a decade update to to fix that. But I don't know. Maybe they just said it and forgot it, I guess. But yeah, it's it's something. There's there's a promo code. There's an inflation buster promo code for extra 25% <laughs> off. Promo awesome. code buster. Like, I think that's kind of funny, but also yeah. indicates that this is kind of still a thing that yeah. is, is out there. Yeah, so it it, it has they're offering you know music and CDs, DVDs. They have like sheet music. Um, so uh, as we, uh, we're, I guess we're gonna kind of start to transition towards the the episode. But um, my wife told me that she remembers her dad dressing up as salty <laughs> when she was a kid. So her uh, her her mom. Uh, was a, a pastor at a church, and and so uh, her dad and uh, other people in their family would help out with stuff. And so she said that like they had like um, obviously they have like the sheet music and stuff. There was some sort of a I don't know if it was like a VBS type deal or some sort of like a show that they were going to put on, and and 
her dad was dressed up as salty, <laughs> which, as we'll see when we get to the episode, sounds terrifying. <laughs> was that an official costume? You mean like they bought it from I, salty.com I, or they made she it? Didn't, she, didn't, she didn't know that. So okay. I don't know if it was just like, you know, they made one out of cardboard or yeah. if it was at one point they were selling them or whatever. But uh, she said that she remembers her, her dad dressing up as salty. <laughs> I'm thinking of um, the the comment that you just yeah. said that we were going to read about yeah. the about the history of that. Do you want to yeah. read a little yeah, bit so, about the background there? So in the the bio section, um, it kind of talks about like how the idea for like the costume to to dress up for the live action salty uh, got started. So th- like I said, this is started by a husband and a wife, uh, Ernie. Retino and Debbie Kerner Retino. And uh, on the website, it says, um, let's see. It's hard to read because it's in like yeah. that comic dancing <laughs> yeah. type font. So uh, this is a, a story. Uh, uh, it says, Debbie recalls, I couldn't see Ernie, but I could hear him rustling around. I came around the corner and there was Ernie standing on the bed wearing my blue tights red knee socks, red underwear, a Superman t-shirt, and he had on a red and white checkered tablecloth tied around his shoulders. Then in his best Clark Kent in, in, imitation, he ripped off his glasses and started leaping off the bed going whoosh, whoosh. All right, so just the <laughs> thing that I wanted to point out here is that the wife has clearly stated that that he was wearing her tights, socks, and underwear. And yeah. I just think... <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, Jared. I know what you're trying to imply by that. However, uh, I will say, all I'm in saying is that I dressed up as yeah. Robin Hood, yeah. and I wore my mom's green tights. Also, my uh, mom's a lot shorter than me, so but, that's probably the only time uh, they would have w- fit. <laughs> what I would say is, like, this is a full grown man. I know yeah. that, like, if I attempted to wear any of my wife's clothing, there's. No chance I could get it over even one leg. Yeah, it's not coming back. <laughs> no, it's and if if I did get it on, it's ruined. It's there's right. no no chance of it being worn again. Yeah, but I mean, it, this this led to the idea of like what the costume for for Salty could be because the as you read the bio, uh, they kind of tell the story that they had all these songs and ideas, and they're like, we need a cartoon character to go along with them. And that's where the idea came from. Yeah, it makes sense. It's very <clears throat> song focused. So what yes. we listen to is is not really a cartoon. Like um, I, I know we've talked, we haven't talked about it on the yeah. podcast, but for people who know like Adventures in Odyssey is very story driven. It's about the characters and the situations. It's like a, a play or a drama of mm-hmm. like a TV show. There's other cartoons like McGee and Me, which mm-hmm. is a little more, you know, again, like mm-hmm. a typical cartoon TV show plot resolution. Yeah. This is definitely musical, this right? This is it's, more like a variety show. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's like live action people. You yeah. Know, there's singing songs, multiple songs. Yeah. So so to be clear, there is a an animated version of Salty that is like um like a comic strip type of thing, right? It's not like a a cartoon where it's moving, but there's like a, a comic strip where he's animated and they say things and there's pictures of them and that is what my recollection of salty growing up was this this cartoon bible Mm -hmm. then there is also a live action tv show uh that is like peak 90s right at the at the end of this episode it said it was from 1994 oh yeah (laughs) um and you can really you can really tell it um but with that in mind, I say let's – are we ready to, to get into the, the content of the TV show, Mike? Is there anything else you wanted to say? No, I just wanted <laughs> to say um, you know, that this is basically like, to me, the Christian version of Barney is what I would compare yeah. it to. Yeah, well, I, I have a, uh, a description in my notes that I'll, I'll bring up when we get to it. But uh, okay. yeah, it, it's very much uh, you know, like, a, like a kid's show of the time. Barney is a, is a good description. Yeah, um, it's it, it's a lot of singing because yeah. Barney, yes. you know, the I Love You song and things yeah, like yeah. that. I but found a lot of, of similarities. Instead so. of Barney loving you, it's Jesus loving you. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And I and I feel like it was popular. And he's even purple, right? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you know, or deep blue. I'm, I'm yeah, not sure. He's, yeah, he's like, uh, I th- he's, you know, in, in the, 
the animated version, he's very clearly like royal blue, but mm. in the live action, he's more like indigo. I, I, yeah. I would say that's probably true. Yeah. Um, all right. So, um, uh, this, this starts out and the first thing you see is the animated version of him and it comes up and it says like, you know, salty, the singing songbook, And here's this, uh, you know, cartoon of him. And, and I was like, all right, we're, we're in for, for a good time. Cause we, we weren't sure this was live action when we, uh, initially found it. We thought mm-hmm. it was a cartoon. Um, also if anyone wants to watch this, you can find it on YouTube. It's very easy to find. Uh, when you search on YouTube, uh, the one we watched is called salty volume one. It is by an account called silent guitars. If you search for it, it'll have, it'll be the one with the most views. It has like 1.9 million views or something. That's Um, crazy. That's yeah. I didn't I didn't even realize how I mean this may be one of the most popular topics that we talked about and yet I knew what it yeah. was and I can't actually say I before yeah. today I actually watched a whole episode of Salty before but yes. I kind of knew <laughs> that it was it was there I knew it was a thing it was sold in Christian bookstores but yeah yes, we watched yep. volume one yes um, and so. Uh, then it cuts to live action, and the first thing you see is a terrifying live action version of Salty. And this costume looks like a hate crime. <laughs> it looks like he is wearing uh. what the equivalent, like, so to be clear, the face plate is blue and white, but it looks like what people would wear for blackface. Like it is that he has this big white circles around his eyes <laughs> and this blue, his entire face is painted dark blue. And I saw it and I was like, this looks like a hate crime waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was uh, unfortunately it hasn't aged well. Yes. Um, I mean, also there's some other yeah. elements that I found to be yeah. questionable in content, yes. which maybe you'll get to, but. So just to be clear, like it's not blackface, but it looks, it's uncomfortably close, even though it's different colors. And he's like, my thing was like, why not just have the costume be, he's wearing a book and it's just his face, no makeup. Like that would be fine. I would be totally fine with that. Like that. I don't think he needed to have his entire face and hair dyed blue for this. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like the clown thing. I saw yes. it as like it was trying to be clown makeup, but he didn't want to do, yeah. you know, just he, he was already sort of going for that unified. I'm a, a blue book or whatever. So yes. he just decided to become the blue man and, and yeah. have the tights to match and everything. Yeah. So I think I mean, the costume itself, I think, is fine, except for I I. The face paint is is my my wife walked in the room and she said that's what he looks like because <laughs> she had never seen the live act she had also only seen the cartoon she had heard all the audio CDs yeah uh-huh. and she said and she was like taken aback by it yeah that's it's kind of creepy I get that it yes. was the nineties but yeah I I would say that costume didn't end well did he yes. use, he used other costumes though in other versions of salty yeah, I right. Think- I think so. Like I said, I think this is like the first episode, first run, first draft. So mm-hmm. hopefully it improves in the later ones. But um, <laughs> so it opens up and they're singing a song. The song is called I'm a Little Praiser. I'm a, and then it goes, I'm a little praiser. I'm a hallelujah raiser. And I stand about three feet tall. Well, and then well. it goes on. There's other parts that go to it or whatever. But uh, it starts out. So he's he's like skipping along and he uh is there's a real like Pied Piper vibe to this intro where he's like skipping around a neighborhood and like calling kids out of houses to come and follow him. Mm -hmm. And my thought when I was watching this is I was like, surely someone called the cops on them when they were recording (laughs) this. Yeah. It's not like it's all, it's not like it's Hollywood where it's done at a big production studio. Yeah, they're, they're, They're like in someone's neighborhood and then in a park and like, if yeah. someone saw this, they had to be like, at least call the cops and be like, uh, do you know that there's a dude dressed as a book, like <laughs> getting kids to follow him into the woods? <laughs> and, and so the, the video starts, it like didn't yeah. do much intro. It was very much in the middle of the action, which yes. was kind of hard to figure out. I was mm. like, what? Like, it's an intro song. I get it. But it yeah. wasn't as strong as an intro song as something it like it doesn't explain like the premise of it to you. Right. It's just like, 
hey, we're you know we're gonna sing some praise song. It doesn't just be like, hey, this is salty, and we're his friends, and we are gonna go. You know, like there was no. It wasn't like a song that gives you the premise. It was just, you know, it's yeah, a, I guess it's the telling you song. about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the first song. There, I'm uh-huh. thinking of like Arthur that has the nice clip show of things like yeah. that, and you kind of get to see the characters and yeah. you know who they are. Maybe a little backgrounds, like, or you know, maybe have a couple like a cold open, and then then yeah. go into the first song of like. You know, let the credits roll for Salty. I just mm-hmm. had no idea. And maybe there was something that was cut off in this particular rip. But mm-hmm. I was just like, <clears throat> is it just literally going to be song by song by song? Because the yeah. I'm a Little Praiser song is like a good yeah. warm up song. But it's, again, it's catchy. It, it's an earworm. <laughs> yeah, it it, it it unfortunately does stick in my head. Uh, yes. That one is <laughs> And the last song, the doodly song, it was. Oh, yeah, man. Were, were two that I found to be the most catchy. But yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't understand exactly like, you know, as a kid, I suppose I would be interested in it, but mm-hmm. and maybe they don't have the attention span yeah. to be like, why are they following him? Where are they going? Yeah. Who, is, who is salty so, and who are all these people? So they he, he gets these kids. He's gathering them up from, from around the neighborhood. Uh, Mike, what do you think about these kids' outfits? Uh, pretty 90s. I mean. I, the one kid, the first kid that comes out, I saw his outfit and I was like, that's that rules. Yeah. <laughs> it, it looked like he had on like a rugby outfit to me. Like he has on like this bright striped polo and these short black shorts. Yeah. That, and I was like, I was like, it looks like he's like ready to go play a rugby game. And I was like, that rules. And then and the next the- girl comes out and she looks straight up like, like, uh, hot, like, She's wearing like Oshkosh Bagash or yep. like uh like she's like in Saved by the Bell. It's like real bright with a crazy pattern on it. I was kind of into it. I was like, these clothes are kind of cool. Yeah, you know, they're back in style. Yeah, somewhere. maybe that's I mean, why kids. I was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're kids. It was flipped, it was the... flipped all the way back around. <laughs> right. I was trying to think, do you remember the name of this? You got me thinking because the guys, like, you know, I kind of knew what was Oshkosh Bagash was definitely <laughs> yeah. one of them. Definitely yeah. does not exist anymore. Yeah. Um, but do you remember the bead shirts that girls used to wear that would like have animals? Oh, on them? I know what exactly what you're talking about. And sometimes they were faces, and they had like yeah. yarn. They had like yarn yeah. that came off of them. They were like 3D. Oh man. So I, it's not Lisa Frank. Um. Uh-huh. Oh man, I do not know what that is. I wonder. I don't want to take the time to Google it in the middle of this, I, yeah. but. Yeah, yeah anyone that anyone that knows the shirts that we're talking about, I remember them specifically. I don't think that they were like a thing for boys, but girls, no. they were they were like animals and they had like buttons or yarn on them and they were very like, you know, kind of three-dimensional like they came off the shirt and it was very like tactile and it, yeah. they were really cool, but I I don't remember what they're called. That yeah, man, that's that's wild. I, I kept looking for those because that's what I remember of being the coolest mm-hmm. things. Even yeah. as like a boy, it's like, oh, the girls yeah. had these like really cool, yeah. interesting, like you said, three dimensional type of yeah. fox. There's a, there, there was a kid that I saw. He's wearing a turquoise and purple stripe polo. And I was like, that's just a Charlotte Hornet shirt that covered <laughs> up the logo on. I was like, that kid. And I was like, also, that shirt looks awesome. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they, he gathers the kids up, he leads them through this park and into the woods. And there's a part that it seems like they did not think this part through very well when he's wearing the costume, because there's a part where he's like, they're walking through like this little ravine, but he has on this big unwieldy costume with these shoes and he's like trying to get up it. And he's like straddling this, (laughs) this like cleft. That he's trying to walk through, and it, and it looks like he's almost about to fall a bunch of times. He, he eventually gets through it, but I was like, eh, maybe they should have just found somewhere like level ground for them to walk through. Right. Well, you know, yeah. the crossing the bridge yeah. is like a cool thing, but yeah, yeah that costume was way too big yeah. for a, a you know a walk what yeah. appears to be like a you know a pretty hilly park. Yeah. So they they cut to um what what appears to be like a model of what the out uh, the exterior of like you know salty's house or whatever is supposed to be so it's definitely not a real place it appears to be like a model that they made and then it, it looks like a gingerbread inside. house yeah it looks, it looks like, like yes yeah, it looks like a gingerbread yeah. house it looks like a or like a house that like in in christmas and like the, the little town that they would have yeah yeah something yeah. like that um so they cut to the inside and what the inside reminded me of 
is it reminded me of Pee Wee's Playhouse. Oh, uh, yeah. Or uh, the show called Out of the Box. Okay, I haven't seen that one. Out of the Box, I think, was on the Disney Channel. It was, you know, it was another kid's show from, from the 90s or whatever where – they would basically they got into this box and then on the inside of the box it was like Doctor Who's TARDIS where it's bigger in the inside than it is on the outside. They have all these, you know, play things or whatever, but that's what the inside looks like, right? So it's like a combination of like Pee Wee's Playhouse and Barney is probably kind of what we're working with here. There's a bunch of bright colors. And, uh, there's toys all over. Yeah, there's there's, like, there's, there's all kinds of crazy there's... stuff on the walls and yeah. um and there's like a big open space for them to sit and then like a space for the host, which in this case is Salty, to kind of stand and they're kind of sitting and watching him. So um, he gets up there and he says that he has a new invention and uh, his invention is called Mr. Knows It All. And it mm. is a gigantic nose that is on the wall. And he says that it can answer any question you answer you ask it uh, but the only problem is that when it answers it it's going to sneeze confetti <laughs> um so what happens next is he you know this girl uh wearing the dopest outfit um she is like i can stump it and so she asks it like who loves us more than anyone in the world and the and mr knows, knows it all is like easy god <laughs> and so <laughs> It you know it sneezes the confetti flies out and then like the word God appears in its eyes or whatever. Yeah, it so, reminded me of yeah. Nickelodeon, right? Yeah. Where you get oh slime. yeah, it, yeah. Where or like on um on Double Dare, there was the one where you had to reach up in the nose, yes, and, fly, yes. and pull the flag out. That's yeah. exactly what it is. It's like yeah. the nose from Double Dare. That's exactly yeah. <laughs> what it is. Yeah, I mean, like, I wonder if they got inspired by that. I mean, it was probably roughly around the same time, right? I wonder, I mean, I wonder which one would have been first. Double Dare. I, I think Double Dare was probably already out at this time, I think. Yeah, probably. But, <clears throat> yeah, but... Um, it was still early, mid-90s, so it's yeah, possible. But I, yeah, I think Double Dare was, was like the... Well, I don't know. Whatever. You can look it up on Wikipedia if anyone's <laughs> interested when Double Dare came out. Um, so the next thing that happens is there's a kid named Josh and Josh says he says I want to get in on that spaghetti <laughs> and he's like spaghetti he's like yeah the stuff that he's like oh you mean confetti so he gets up and he crouches down under the nose and he asks it a question and then it, it answers and it sprays confetti all over him <laughs> and then he like is picking it up and like throwing it um so eventually uh, they ask it a couple more questions, and and it basically ends up being like uh, salty. Ask he's like, I want to ask the kids a question, and I don't want Mister Knows It All to answer it. Um, and so the conversation turns to uh, who is um, God's light in the world, uh, and so a couple kids guess like the sun and stars, and he's like, Well, I see what you're going for, but. That's not exactly what we mean. So someone says Jesus, and Salty's like, "Bingo, you nailed it." Uh, and then someone, and then this other girl immediately whips out a Bible and is like, "Ah!" But here it says that we are are supposed to be the light. If Jesus is the light, how could we also be the light? And she thinks she's like, "Got," she's like, "Gotcha, Salty." <laughs> Just like, like the oh. Pharisees. Yes, and uh, and so Salty's like, "Ah." You think that, but he's like, who knows why? And this other girl comes up and she's like, well, by the transitive property, if I, if Jesus is the light and I ask Jesus into my heart, now I am the light. <laughs> and so she, she, uh, reasons it out and he's like, you're correct. And then it, we're going to go, uh, into our first song. But before that happened, <laughs> so salty says, Josh. Turn me to page 37. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he so, turns around and this kid reaches like into the book and for, like pretends to open it. And then it and then it cuts to the song. Yeah. So, Josh, he reminded me of the kid from <clears throat> uh, the the kazoo kid. Have you seen that yeah. vine or that YouTube yes. where the so, guy's like, yeah, I know exactly. Go ahead. Yeah. I was he's like, hey, wait a minute. Who are you? That's who Josh reminded me of. Yeah. They have the same kind of like nineties, you, you know, know I haircut. wonder I wonder if 
you know, it could have been the same kid, maybe like if he was a child actor, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I guess I just assume the kids were like from this dude's church. Sure. But I guess they could have been child actors, you know, yeah. I don't know. Um, Anyways, so about this Bible opening. Incident. Yeah. So so uh, he 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 reaches in, he, he opens it and they go right into the first song. The first song is called uh, This Little Light of Mine. So this mm-hmm. is pretty standard. Most people probably know this one. Um, so the the version that they sing had a real kind of country vibe to it mm-hmm. because there was a ton of harmonica in it. Like there was so much harmonica in this song. <laughs> Double tracked harmonica. Yeah. It yeah. Was, the thing that stood out to me about the song was not just the song, but the costumes. Oh, like the costumes. The weird, yeah. The, so they, they dressed them up as candles, like these yeah. big red or orange candles mm-hmm. and they had no arms in the candles. If yes. I remember seeing that so, correctly. You're right. So the way it starts out is first verse, no costumes, regular, Mm -hmm. nothing. Next verse, all the kids get up and they surround a kid. I think his name is John, which I believe John may have been the person who opens salt for anyone that's going to correct me. I believe he says, John turned me to page 37. Josh is the one that wanted confetti. John turned the page. (laughs) Right. And, uh, and they said, you know, hide me under a bushel, and then they say no, and up jumps John in this candle outfit. But like Mike said, there's no arms in it, yeah. so it looks really weird. Um, and so they keep doing that. You know, hide me under a bushel. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Okay. Then they go to the the last verse, and now everyone's in a candle outfit except for like the three littlest kids, because I guess they didn't have their size or something. <laughs> they would suffocate and fall over like yeah. with no arms. They just couldn't balance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they, yeah, so they, they, now everyone's in a, in a candle thing and they, they finish out the song. Um, so the next thing that happens when they finish it is uh, Salty's like, Hey, let's head over to the imagination circle. And the imagination circle is like on the ground in the, in the playhouse or whatever. And they walk over there and they start spinning around it. And, and Salty says, he asks the kids, hey, he's like, hey, where do you want to go? Implying that, like, they could choose anywhere in the world that they wanted to go. You know, Australia, France, Disney World, India. <laughs> this kid the goes, moon. Yeah, yeah, the moon. <laughs> Underwater. This kid goes, a farm. <laughs> Those city slickers in California. Those kids yeah. are... <laughs> What's the most magical place you could think of? A farm. Yeah, yeah. That's so, what they get for living in Southern California. They are just like, you know what? I'm tired <laughs> of taking the train everywhere. <laughs> I want to go to a farm. The most exotic so, thing. The most exotic thing I could think of. A farm. So then they are all magically transported in front of a barn. And everyone is wearing a straw hat, including Salty. And all the kids have on bandanas uh, tied around their neck. Um, And uh, off to the side, there are two people in a cow costume. So, like, you would have seen, like, maybe, like, in a, you know, in cartoons and stuff, or even in TV shows, always have people dressing up in, like, a two-man horse costume, right? That's what this costume is, but it's a cow. Uh, And so... It is very obvious that they are on a farm, but the kid in the dope Charlotte Hornets shirt, uh, he gets up and he goes, yep, we're definitely on a farm. And, and everyone dies laughing because he has apparently smelled, he smelled the manure and he's like, that was the giveaway. Yep. <laughs> so they imagined the poo smell that yes. really, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, the like imagination you said, of all the places, yeah. right? You couldn't have imagined. Let's imagine a farm without yeah. the smell of manure on it. Yeah, you know? I mean, maybe it was just the realism. It was the yeah. smell of vision version. <laughs> smell of vision. Um. So yeah, then they um. There's a a really. I thought this was a really funny thing that Salty says. He says. Hey kids, go get those lanterns and let's have some fun. Which <laughs> it, it sounds like he's like, we're gonna like burn something down. Like we're gonna start yeah. a riot and we're gonna get all these lanterns and we're gonna go nuts. We're gonna like, go <laughs> torch some houses or something. But so like they're the old proper gas lamps. Like they're yeah. like the, the old gas lamps, which is oh really yeah, they're oil oil lamps. Yeah, yeah. 
which, you know, I thought, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. Could they have – like what are these gas lamps for? They like – don't would you use those on a farm? I mean, um, I mean, I, I I would say you probably. I mean, on their imagination, who yeah. knows? Could be a farm in the past, or <laughs> just you know, a farmer that needs to keep twenty oil lamps all next to each other. So yeah. he has them I at the ready. I feel like it might be yeah. a hazard. I don't know if you're yeah. out in the cornfields and you drop yeah, Mrs. it. You Mrs. Know? O'Leary's cow. That that <laughs> two man cow costume is about to burn the whole town down. Yeah, I know. It's going to kick it and knock it over. <laughs> I don't know. It's really weird. This so it's so it's not just yes. a farm. It's like a Gone with the or uh, not Gone with the Wind. Uh, grapes of Wrath. Yeah, yeah. Farm. Grapes of Wrath Dust Bowl. Farm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so I think that's the second John Steinbeck book. We uh, call the Wilds John Steinbeck, isn't it? I th- think so. Uh, well, anyway, if I'm wrong, correct me. <laughs> Engage with us. Okay. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Um, so the next thing that they are gonna they're gonna sing is they're gonna sing uh, "Give Me Oil for My Lamp," uh, which this is my this is the best song they sing. I think. Well, this is like my personal favorite of the songs that mm-hmm. they sing. Um, but uh, I have two two issues with it. One. <clears throat> they didn't do the hallelujah in the middle of the verse. So normally it's like, uh, so the, I'll, I'll do the, give me gas for my Ford. Keep me trucking for the Lord. Give me gas for my Ford. I pray. Hallelujah. All right. But they didn't do that, which I, I had an issue with. Yeah. Um, why, but, why wouldn't they? I mean, I they have the literal Ford there. I mean, they yeah. have like an old model T yeah. type, you know, vehicle. Mm. that's the way i've always sung that song was with that that hallelujah that's in the middle and it's in the same the same spot in every verse uh and the verses change so they do uh give me oil for my lamp give me gas for my ford and then give me umption for my gumption (laughs) but they don't do my two favorite verses which are uh give me wax for my board (laughs) so that one is Give me wax for my board. Keep me surfing for the Lord. Give me wax for my board. I pray. Hallelujah. And then the other one that they don't do is <laughs> give me hot sauce for my taco. Let me witness in Morocco. Give me hot sauce for my taco. I pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> I never heard that one. I, you never I heard, heard that one? Those are, one. Yeah, those are, those are my two favorites. They didn't do either one of them. But other than that, you know, that song is great. That song's real fun, real catchy. Um. Yeah, and anyway, do you have any insights on the song, Mike? Beyond that, no. I mean, the, yeah. the Hallelujah part. I don't know yeah. if that's just a Midwestern thing, or you know, is just. Well, like I looked it up thing. online just to see that you know it wasn't just something that that I had done, and and online in the lyrics that I found, they have in parentheses Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. So interesting. Um, <clears throat> so the next thing that happens is, um, they come out of the imagination. And, and you know they're back in the clubhouse like they never left and um the nose it all has jumped off the wall uh and he has run away and and we get the great joke it's a runny nose yep um the the kids corner it and, and then they uh escort it back to the wall and then we get another another pun and this uh, and it's all he says the last thing we need on this show is a running gag Oh uh, yeah, that's so. That so she she gives him a tissue and she's yeah. like, my my mom says when you're sick you should use yeah. a hanky and then yeah. she takes and, off her her bandana from the farm and they yeah, yeah. somehow it that you know calms them down and they get the yeah. nose back on the wall. But the, uh, the puns they they did like the puns. I want to comment on this too. Yeah, that like yeah yeah they they did like the. The really weird laugh track, like it was like the oh, yeah yeah I forgot it yeah 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 it was like a title card with like ha 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 and like laughing it was, yeah it was like a, like clip art of like mouths laughing yeah and it would and every time there was like that joke it would cut to that yeah. <laughs> it was weird like I get the point is you're supposed <laughs> to laugh but I feel like a kid would laugh at that i mean it was kind of yeah. it wasn't quite potty I, humor but yeah. it was like adjacent to you know booger I mean, what humor. i would say is like if you just showed the other kids laughing you don't need to have the clip art of the mouths laughing like the kids would know like 
oh, we're supposed to laugh because these other kids laughed. Right. It reminded me, the, the title cards yeah. reminded me almost of like the 1950s Batman with like the pow. Oh, whatever. yeah. yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> laugh. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. You know? Right. <laughs> like it was just like a weird thing and it took me out of it. And, and as a kid, yeah. I guess maybe that's cool. It just seemed yeah. like awkward editing. Yeah. Um, so the next song that they sing is called God is So Good to Me. Uh, I didn't have a lot of thoughts about this one. It was fine. Nothing, nothing like really stood out to me. It wasn't, you know, super crazy or anything like that. Um, Mike, anything on this song? Uh, I think this is forgettable. Yeah, I, it was, I, it's it's in the middle, the middle of the of the thing. They're starting to drag. But things are going to ramp ramp up again towards the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next thing they say, uh, "Say to the Lord, I love you." Is the name of this song. Um, they and, get the slow uh, song, so, right? Yeah, Salty brings out his song mobile, which is uh, another one of his inventions, and it helps you praise the Lord. Uh, it's like a one man band machine, and he has a bunch of instruments on it, and he's got like a bunch of like plastic trumpets and saxophones, and he hands them out to the kids. Then they sing this song, and he he drives the the uh, song mobile around, and they're they're going nuts on the saxophones and the, the plastic trumpets or whatever. Yeah. Um, it looks like a Fisher price toy, to be honest. Like it looks like one yeah. of those, uh, I, the thing that I thought of was like the Walker for kids, like that you walk around in, like as a toddler, <laughs> like, I know, it's the, like the, the one circular. with the, the, the red body and the orange, yeah. they're the yellow top. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It was like that. It didn't have like the, the top on it, but it was very much like that. And there's like this huge keyboard on it. Yeah. And it, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. Um, so then the next song that they sing uh, is some song that I have never heard of. And the only way I know the name of it is because in the credits they list it. It's called Doodle Oodle Oodle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is the one you were talking about. You said it was another one of the real catchy ones. Yeah. I mean, it's like the doodly oodly oodly. It just yeah. is annoying enough that, you know, you would have to sing it five or six times and then it's just permanently scarred in your head. I had to yeah. stop listening to it because I started humming it to myself. Yeah. It's cause... like God loves you, doodle oodle oodle. God loves something. It's something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, it, yeah. So it's, it's uh, pretty nuts. Okay. And then. They finish out with the the all time banger, the absolute classic, Jesus loves me. That's yep. the, the that's the closing song. They and end it on a high note, right? Um, and they get the littlest girl in the entire uh, like cast to sing a solo on it, and she freaking kills it. Yeah, she, she nailed so, it. She sounded so good. That was before auto tune too. So yeah, like yeah. you know that that wasn't edited in the in the back yeah. with you know Ann Terry's or whatever. That's yeah. like legit talent. She yeah, probably it was, Yeah, it was I was like I was surprised that it was that good from like a girl that little. She was yeah. I mean, she had to be at, at best maybe like 5 or something, right? I mean, like she was very small. Yeah. Um so, so- in this yeah, song, I wanted to comment that like there are those like anime style hearts like floating over people. Do you remember that part? <laughs> I I might I might have been taking notes, so I might have missed that and just been listening. Yeah. But there's no, some, that's like, really there's funny. some like transparencies of like you know it's like Jesus loves me or whatever. But yeah. like you know there's like these hard bubbles like you know transparently flying over people. It was just like a little weird. I don't know. <laughs> like I get they had to do something, yeah. and it catches the eye certainly, but. Mm-hmm. It just reminded me like of a weird, I don't know, almost like Powerpuff Girls, I guess, is what I thought of, like some sort of weird, you know, over overlay. Anyways, yeah. that, that that was my comment on that one. So uh, the, the song ends and then someone says, oh, no, <laughs> Mr. Knows It All blew itself off the wall again. And Salty goes, oh, no, it's a running gag. And the nose runs out of the building and then. Um, over the, like, as the credits roll, you get this video of the kids and salty chasing the nose through the park. And this person that is wearing the nose costume, it appears that they are wearing, uh, nothing under it because like the nose, like the, so the legs are coming through the nostrils and the nose goes like all the way up to like where like their crotch would be. 
and they have it's just, very long legs. And, and yeah, yeah, they've got real long legs, and then it's just like skin that's coming out of it. So it's it's very possible that because we watched it on YouTube and it's like a VHS rip from the nineties or whatever that it's maybe they had like on flesh tone, like leggings or something, but it looks like this person is just like, you know, in their underwear in this, in this nose costume. And then yeah. their legs are just sticking out of it and they're running around this park. Um, it, it was, it's, a, it's very strange. It's a weird one. It's a weird yeah. way to end. And it again, it yeah. definitely feels like a homemade video at this point because you see yeah. like cars and traffic in the background. Yeah, like, yeah, you see. They didn't yeah, shut down the studio. They see like yeah. the street parking cars and like, yeah. you know, people moving around and be like, well, there, someone, I saw a giant nose at the park today. Someone, <laughs> How was someone, your day? On a, someone on a huge cell phone calling the cops and be like, yeah. <laughs> there's a bunch of children with a book and a nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it um, was wild yes so uh and then with the credits roll and uh, we find out that salty is played by ernie retino who you may recall is the inventor of salty so he he put on the the costume played it himself the nose the person who's running around in the nose is listed as aaron retino so mm-hmm. presumably this is his daughter or some sort of family relation um mm-hmm. And it's Aaron is spelled E R I N, so presumably that's a daughter or a niece or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then his, his dad was on the props and construction. Yes, too. yeah, yeah. Where, where Ernie Ernie Retino Senior, right. you know, helped helped make these costumes, presumably. Um, and then these were just two names that I saw in the credits that I thought were awesome. There was one of the kids was named Crystal Champagne, <laughs> <laughs> and and then someone else was named Christopher Good Game. <laughs> That's, I wonder if they were their real names or not. Like you know, because sometimes yeah. kids or parents get like weird a stage about name. Yeah, their like stage a, name was Crystal Champagne. Right, Crystal like, was the girl with like the sick out Oshkosh Bagash outfit. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. The one the one that I had marked was the mm. kids' coach. Her name mm. was Marianne Meltebarger, and I thought that was <laughs> that was a pretty sweet last name. Yeah. Just, you so know. we got Good Game and Meltebarger. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so and that's and that's kind of how the uh, how the episode ends. Um, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it was interesting. It was it's you know it's only twenty three minutes, so like a good a good time. Like you could definitely play that uh like in a like a kid's church you know yeah. like that's like a good a good amount of time for you know they release the kids so, so the the sermon can commence mm-hmm. and you throw that tape on uh and you got you know 23 minutes of the lesson taken care of it's actually kind of an awkward yeah. time frame mm-hmm. though i mean here's yeah. my perspective as someone who used to have to do you know, yeah. lessons and things like that. I don't think I ever taught a Sunday school, but yeah. I mean, a half, a 23 minutes in a mm-hmm. kid's Sunday school is mm-hmm. kind of short. Um, well, what I, what I assume is that it would be, that would be like part of it. And the other part would be like a lesson that the teacher presents. Mm-hmm. And then they play that as like a supplement to it or something. Or mm-hmm. the other thing is that it could be, it could have been cut. Uh, I don't know if this ever played on TV, Mm-hmm. But like that's about how long a TV show would be, right? Like twenty two minutes ish, mm-hmm. and maybe they they cut the credits down, they scroll them real fast on the side mm-hmm. to get it down to TV. But I mean, like that's how long a TV show would be usually is like twenty two minutes. So it's yeah. possible that it you know aired on public access or something, or I don't know. Right. Yeah, and I, I guess it could be. I guess I'm thinking of this from the <clears throat> perspective of like this <clears throat> one that we watched. This yeah. was one episode, but they also mm-hmm. sold it uh, like a VHS of yeah. Salty Volume One, and that's what yeah. you got. This one, mm-hmm. which was like one episode for thirty yeah. minutes, is kind of short. Only because yeah. for me, you know, you could do a f- if, if it's usually those blocks are like an hour usually, right? Yeah. Like Sunday schools at nine thirty, mm-hmm. church starts at ten thirty, so you have an hour. Well, and- I was talking more like uh, kids' church in the middle of. Uh- like oh, when they release the kids yeah. in the middle of the sermon. Got That's it. more what I was talking about. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. It'd probably be hard to cover like a whole hour of Sunday school, but like, right. you know, in the 30 minutes or so that they release them for the sermon or whatever, you might be able to. Okay. Make yeah. That makes it. sense. There was yeah. a lot of songs too. Um, it was yeah. very interactive as a kid. Yeah. I think that, um, I don't know if I would have liked it as a kid mm-hmm. cause I never really watched it as a kid. It was definitely flashy. 
I think by the time I would have watched it in youth group, I would have thought it was old and outdated just because like the costumes are mm. way too bright. And it's just mm. just a little weird that humor is I, I never like clowns or yeah. circus humor. And it seems a little like clowny sort of yeah. absurd humor with like the nose running and, yeah. you know, stuff like that. Well, I like, oh, you know, I definitely think things. it's I definitely think it's targeting like a like a pre, you know, like an element, it's like elementary school kid targeted, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, of course, a middle school kid's gonna think it's lame, yeah. or whatever. But I could, I could definitely imagine myself. You know, it's 1994. I'm, you know, four, four years old or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I'm into this. I, like, I, I could definitely, I definitely see the merits of it. Um, mm-hmm. So, speaking of that, do you think we want to move into our, uh, into our, into our, our rating? Is there anything else you'd like to say before we, we rate this? I was just going to I was just going to mention that I think that the kids delivered their lines just like with way too much uh expression. I mean, I get that yeah. they're child actors, but there are some instances where I was The girl, just, the girl with the handkerchief, I I was I was like surprised at how confident and like well spoken she was. I was like, whoa. <laughs> it's like this is like an she sounded like an adult. Yeah. <laughs> it's like like I definitely think that they were like child child actors and probably not just like, you know, kids of people at the church or whatever because they yeah. and they, you know, were did a really good job. But definitely I, I could see what you're saying there. Yeah. It was just everything was really extreme and honestly the voice of the noise, uh, the voice of the nose, yeah, he kinda bothered me because it was yeah. in like a very Pee Wee's Playhouse kind of way that yeah. it wasn't quite gross out humor, but the way he just mm-hmm. like laughed at himself and you know made dumb yeah. jokes and things like that, I think I, I would would have not have liked it. So my rating, I guess I'll yeah. go first. Go ahead. Um I think overall that it probably would have kept kids' attention from ages mm-hmm. like three to six. But just like Barney, people mm-hmm. – it was very cool to hate Barney by the time you were in fourth grade. And I think yeah. it would have been cool to hate Salty when you were in fourth grade. Whereas I compare it to something yeah. like – to me, the best of the best S tier is VeggieTales. And yeah. of course, that's going to be my yardstick. I remember the most yeah. about VeggieTales compared to some of these other ones. I think in every way in terms of the biblical lesson – VeggieTales was superior. I mean, you know, they actually told some biblical stories yeah. here. Um, I think the songs are better in VeggieTales. You know, they they did versions of, you know, songs as well, but I just think they did them better. And ultimately, it had more shelf life, I think, that you could watch it as a three-year-old and think it's funny or a six-year-old and think it's funny and still think it's kind of funny when you're 10 or 11 that, like, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Whereas this, you just... I felt there's so much cringe, I guess, with all of the the different elements. The kids are definitely young. It felt like a off-brand Barney to me, and so I'm gonna have to rate it a two salties out of five. So you're rating it two creepy salty uh, makeup faces out of five. Yeah. Um. So for me, I I think that for who it's targeting which is little kids that the, the biblical message that they were trying to show, I think it was pretty clear and easy to understand for kids, mm-hmm. which I think is great. Uh, I think a lot of the songs they did, uh, kids would really like, mm-hmm. uh, so thinking about it now, like you were like, Oh, you know, this stuff is from like the nineties. It looks dated and stuff. I, I guess I'm trying to think of like, even though I didn't necessarily experience it, in the nineties when I was a kid trying to think back to then, like what other things were like at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it, it, I think it did a pretty good job of what it was trying to do. I think the, I think my, my main critique of it is that salty is creepy looking with the makeup. <laughs> like that's my main thing. And like, because he's the main character and he's in it so much, I think that it, it detracts some, but like the content itself, mm-hmm. I think was, was pretty good. I think it mm-hmm. was, I think it really did what it's supposed to do. So uh, because I have no like nostalgia tying me to it, which, you know, Mm -hmm. may have bumped up my score. uh, I think I would, I'll give this a three and a half Mm -hmm. because I think that the content was really good. I think that the message it's sending is, is conveyed well. Um, I thought it was pretty good, but it just, he's so creepy. (laughs) Yeah. Knock some off for that. And, and I don't know that it, it stands up to other things like, 
Veggie Tales or Adventures in Odyssey, which I mm-hmm. I want to save some room to grow when we yeah. do those and rate those. So that's that's why I'm putting it there. Yeah, I could see why they yeah. I could see why they did the songs separately because these yeah. songs would be I think a little better in a vacuum. Um, yeah, where you know if you sing these songs or you mm. use that CD as part of children's yeah. praise or whatever i think that those would go perfectly yeah and you wouldn't even have to know that yeah. it's salty who sings those mm. it's just sort of you know it felt yeah. like the salty brand just mm. encompassed everything it started as songs and then it became a show and then it became a yeah. cartoon I, I don't know which what the order yeah. was but so, there just seemed to be a lot of like add-ons yeah. that just kept growing into this universe so yeah so by yeah, itself, the so, songs were good yeah, so to be clear, we're rating the salty TV show, not the the audio tapes that may have, uh, you know, been of uh, a higher quality or 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 you know, it's a different medium that they're going through. You don't have to look at that <laughs> that creepy face makeup when you're listening to the CD. Um, <laughs> all right, awesome. So, uh, Mike, we have we have some housekeeping, uh, sure. to take care of. So we guys, we got another email, and it's from someone we don't know. We're very excited. That's seriously a big deal. And yes. uh and just, in an international listener. That's right. Oh man, this is like, a big go, deal. Go ahead and read it for us. So um in case you want to write an email, by the way, our email is youthgroupreuniontour at gmail.com. Hope to hear from you. Please uh send us messages. We'll read them on the air or not read your name. Depends what you want us to do. But anyways, we like fan mail so much that we're actually taking some time out of the very important salty episode <laughs> to read this. Um I'll read the whole thing if that's okay. Yeah, Sound yeah, good? go ahead. I okay. think so. It's not, it's not super long. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I'll I'll uh, react to this when we're done. Hi, guys. I am 18 from the UK and loved youth growing up. I regularly listen to your podcast. And it is hilarious, so keep it going, guys. The episodes with Leanne are double fun, so do more episodes with her if you don't mind. Keep acing it, Flo, from the UK. Awesome. Thank you, Flo. Thank you so much for for writing us. Uh, We're excited to have you as a listener. Um, We would also love to hear how you found out about us. If you want to send us a follow-up email, uh, we'd be interested to hear that. But thanks so much for writing to us. If anyone else wants to send us an email... Uh, we would love to hear it and we'll read it on the air or on the podcast uh, unless you, you know, if you tell us, please don't read this, then obviously we won't do that. Yep. So I, I sent Leanne that email and she yes. went, went crazy over it because obviously yeah, number that, is one very, fan. that is a very <laughs> Leanne centric email. I'm not going to lie. Yes. It made me a little jealous. Um, <laughs> You know, she's uh, trying to make uh, uh, she's a strong wrong. case for coming on again, <laughs> you know, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I'm just uh, behind on everything. So I don't know. Well, it's, it's, I'm trying to find good episodes that are good that like, yeah. you know, have a little romance in them, like a walk to remember, for instance. I think that yeah. was, uh, you know, I think that fit her personality well. So yeah. we'll look for some more opportunities to do that. Salty, I don't know if that's, you know, <laughs> I don't know if that's the, that's the right episode, but yeah, we will yeah, definitely well, don't fear not. Leanne will be back. She's, the easiest guest for us to get. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Extremely easy. And for any for anyone clamoring for my wife to be on the podcast, she has explicitly said that she does not think that she will be interesting and she is too afraid to do it. But if there was anything that we uh that she had thoughts about, she would write them out for me to to read for her. So <laughs> Awesome. Her main things are her dad dressed up as salty and she saw him and said, is that what he looks like? I think that's pretty important, right? Yeah. This, this whole thing was weird. It was yeah. weird. It was fever dreamy. You yeah. know, it, it feels nostalgic, but like in a weird way. Um, yeah. I personally like Bible man better if I had to rank them yeah. just at, as a kid or, you know, as a kid type of thing. Bible man was over the top, but it was a little more tongue in cheek. Yeah. We had a lightsaber. That yeah. rules. <laughs> I know. And, you know, they did <laughs> slow motion. I mean, yeah. I would just say like it's, Bible man, I feel like is very clearly targeted at boys, but like as a little boy growing up, there's nothing cooler than a lightsaber. Yeah. It's the thing that, that you talk <laughs> about, right? Like, yeah. You know, I talked about lightsabers for like six years of my life because yeah. they're just that cool. I wanted to change my name to Luke when I was <laughs> little. That's awesome. I was—I yeah. thought it was going to be Obi Wan with your rat yeah. tail. 
well, well <laughs> that was that was that was a different time. That movie had just come out, so I was excited yeah. about it. Phantom Menace Bay. We talked about yeah. it already. I'm just teasing. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, so uh, real quick, let's let's uh, let's get our socials and then let's wrap this up. Sure, you can hit us on Twitter at YG Reunion Tour. You can hit us on Instagram at Youth Group Reunion Tour. You can go to our website, which is y.at slash emojis. These are all emojis. Cool, church, raised hands, guitar. Um, and then what else do we have? We have Reddit. So we are yeah. r slash youth group reunion tour. Yep. And uh, if you go to our website, we also have a link to our Discord. If you want to get in and, and uh, you know, ch- chat with us. <laughs> yeah. And, you can- uh Sit in on our episode ideas. <laughs> yeah. we, we basically just use it as a dumping grounds to dump different videos yeah. to each other. I think, of like, I we think the only this. person that's in it currently is is a, a friend of the podcast, Caleb. Yeah, but, but, uh, but that's okay. Yeah. That's still good content. Yeah, yeah you come can, hang out. You can see whether or not it'd be a good idea to do the best Christian parody songs ever. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's a, an a idea. Teaser, a teaser for a future episode, maybe. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else? Anything else, Mike? No, I just wanted to say, uh, I think that Salty was interesting. I can't say I'm super excited to explore the lore more. I probably would read the comic books more than I would watch the show. Man, again. I want to know about the Iditarod. I want to know. Yeah. I want to know about that. I know that's, the, I don't <laughs> think they leave any room for explaining that in the show. Cause it's so musical focused. <laughs> yeah. There's like two seconds of exposition. So I really have no idea how yeah. they even bring up these other characters into it because it's very like yeah. much like I, I'm a nose, the nose does the thing. And then, you know, yeah. it, it goes away. Like, I don't know. I, I kind of want a deep backstory, but I just don't know if I'm going to get it. So, <laughs> well, um, uh, Please uh, share the podcast uh, if you like it. Uh, suggest it to other people. Uh, we, we'd love to have some more listeners, get some more interaction. Um, anything else, Mike? That's all. I think all right. you can catch us on the flip on the side. Flip side.